All right, I'm Jason Groves uh, with the Las Cruces Sun News. I'm here with Jeff Grammer, Lobo's beat writer for the Albuquerque Journal. Um, we just watched New Mexico beat New Mexico State 68-63 here on Wednesday at the Pan American Center. Jeff, just talk about maybe what you learned, what you saw from tonight. Well, I think the big thing for, for the Lobos, based on what I've been seeing, is they've had somebody different step up every game, do a little something different. Hugh Greenwood with big uh, games some nights. Uh, Alex Kirk in the post has been good. Tonight I think it was all about Kendall Williams. I think uh, Coach Menzies for New Mexico State summed it up best, and he just said in the post game that he thought it was the Kendall Williams show. A minute six into the game, Kendall goes down with the right ankle injury and comes back about five minutes later. And he was just on fire. He scored nine points in an 11-0 run for NMSU. I'm sorry, for UNM in the first half there at one stretch that tied the game at 25. So NMSU takes an 11-point lead in the first half. Kendall Williams, after his injury, comes in and just goes goes nuts there for a stretch and ties the game. And uh, after that, it was, it was kind of all UNM, really. I, I know there was a brief lead for NMSU in the second half, but I think UNM, after they weathered that early storm, I think Kendall Williams really got him back in the game, and I thought... After that, they were comfortable throughout. And what gave uh, what gave the Aggies that early lead, that early storm that Jeff talked about, was the the Aggies were six to seven from the three point line in the first half, um, and they still only led by led by two points, which is something Steve Alford talked about. They felt pretty good, like he said that NMSU wasn't a good three point shooting team, and they just made six to seven, and they were de- still down by two at halftime. So the Lobos obviously felt pretty good about where they were at. Um, second half. Kevin Aronis finally had a breakout game for the Aggies. I thought he was four for five from the three-point line. He made one and then got subbed out with about ten minutes left to play, and he didn't come back in, you know, till under a minute left. And, you know, the Aggies didn't have a shoot-out shooter that was spreading the floor, that hot hand out there. So, you know, they kind of grinded it out. They didn't make free throws. They were 11 to 20 tonight from the free throw line. It hurt them down the stretch, and the Lobos won their fifth straight here at the Pan Am. I think that that second half stretch there's about under eight minutes to go, and and like like Jason said, there there wasn't really a pure shooter on the floor for for NMSU. And in that stretch, I, I saw the Aggies go zone on defense, and it really gave UNM struggles. They they were not scoring. The offense was not working for UNM for a long stretch. But in that time, NMSU missed I think five free throws in a row at one point. Two of them were the front end of one on ones, which are basically just turnovers. Um, the big guy missed three free throws on one one trip because of a lane violation. He got a third try at it and still missed it. So in one 90-second stretch, I, I put down in my notes here, from the 719 mark down to about the 542 mark, they missed five. NMSU missed five free throws, and UNM didn't score in that stretch. That was NMSU's time to really make a run, put a dent in the lead, which at that point was, was 54-49. Um, Daniel Mullings did get an offensive rebound and a putback at one point to make it 54-51. But really, that was their time. That was their opportunity where their zone defense was really shutting down UNM. They had every opportunity to was hit some shots, hit some free throws, and, and tie this game. And it could have been a different outcome, but the free throw line just didn't work for NMSU. It's too bad because um, you and, uh, NMSU out-rebounded the, uh, the Lobos by four. That's the same rebound margin, I believe, um, that, that the Lobos had up in Albuquerque. And maybe worst of all, there was a pretty – no, there's a good energy tonight at the crowd, I thought. It was the best crowd I've seen all season. 81-77 was the attendance tonight. But they, they couldn't give uh, – the Aggies couldn't close this one out. Couldn't get back into it, like Grammer said. Um, NMSU plays here again on Saturday, and then they go into WAC play. Um, I think they'll be fine in the WAC. I think this, this was a game that maybe they'll feel a little bit better about, you know, tomorrow and moving into WAC play because the Lobo is obviously number 16 in the country. They're – they're a pretty good team. So what about with the Lobos? Well, one thing on the Aggies real quick. I, I think four days after what happened up in the pit, it was a 15-point game, and, and they didn't ever let it get out of hand at MSU on Saturday. But for the adjustments that they made, and, and I talked with Steve Alford, I talked with Kendall Williams after the game, both of them commented on the adjustments at MSU made in just four days were the right adjustments. They, they did everything right tonight. Uh, UNM weathered the storm early, uh, obviously got the win. But there were some good things that NMSU showed tonight. I thought the adjustments they made were, were the right ones. Um, as far as uh, UNM goes, they, they play Saturday. They host a South Dakota State team that was in the NCAA tournament last year. Next week they have two road games at number 11 Cincinnati, who has one more game. I forget who they play Saturday, but they could be a 12-0 Cincinnati team taking on a, a at that point, could be a 13-0 
UNM team. So that's going to be a real big game, December 27th in Cincinnati. Then they're at St. Louis. Then they open Mountain West Conference play with the ranked UNLV team. So UNM's in the toughest stretch they have all season. They have five straight opponents that were in the NCAA tournament last year. Three of those games are on the road. Um, at least two of them will be a rank, against ranked teams with Cincinnati and UNLV. So they're, they're still fighting out a tough part of their schedule and grinding out wins. And 12-0, uh, and 0, that's pretty surprising to me that they're 12-0, and 0, but uh, they're just getting better. They still, I don't think, have hit their, hit their stride yet because they haven't been shooting the ball well. And um, every game, it's something different. Tonight, it was Kendall Williams stepping up. Um, some nights, it's Hugh Greenwood. Some nights, it's Alex Kirk in the post. So they, they find a different way to win every night, and they've done it 12 times out of 12 chances so far this year. Where can people follow the Lobos and your work for the rest of the season here? Uh, abqjournal.com slash sports will get you right to the sports section. Um, I also have a blog that's linked there. Or you can follow me at Twitter, at Jeff Grammer, and it's I spell it wrong. It's at G-E-O-F-F. G R A M M E R. And I'm obviously with the Las Cruces Sun News and on Twitter at, at JP Groves. So thanks a lot. We'll talk to you next time.